Votes are still being counted, but a majority of those votes here in District 4 are in, and they have Letitia Johnson with a 1,000 vote lead at this point. Uh, she took to the podium earlier today at around 1030, addressing her supporters, thanking them. Uh, essentially, what we saw was a victory speech, and as we go into Wednesday morning now, that uh, party still continues on as they continue to watch the final votes come in. She prides herself as being a uh, person of public service, saying she volunteered the last 14 years of her life in her community, and that's why she decided that now was the time to run. She ran against a person well known to Fox 2, an investigative reporter who was known for rooting out corruption. One of the reasons he stepped in this ring has to do with the fact that this this seat is currently vacant thanks to and Andre Spivey stepping down after pleading guilty to bribery charges. Another reason why people wanted to get out and make sure that they had a, a representative who would be transparent. And that's one thing they both prided themselves on being is if they were elected, they said that they will know that they will be under the microscope, but that's something they relish and that's something that they say is warranted. Take a listen. I'm a very detail-oriented person, um, and so, you know, I go into that with a microscope as well, looking into things that are being done, how they're being done, and making sure that everything is above board. You just kind of feel like where are we headed as a city, because with four people under scrutiny and two of them having pled guilty, if this isn't the time that we say Detroit has got to put integrity first, I don't think that time's ever going to come. And that's one of the things when I think about it that makes me say, uh, this is way bigger than me. This has always been bigger than me. And if we pass up this opportunity for a clean start, then uh, when are we going to try and make that clean start? Because if it ain't now, I don't know what people are waiting for. And Johnson herself said that she plans to hit the ground running. Tonight is for a celebration to thank her supporters and those who stood by her. Then tomorrow, it's back to work trying to uh, clean up some of that corruption that uh, ML was talking about and that Ms. Johnson was talking about. Of course, this isn't the only close race, and this isn't going to... Uh, be the only newcomer to city council. I'm looking at District 7 now. It's a very tight race. It's going to be a long night for those candidates. Fred Durrell has a 100 vote lead over the person he's running against, Regina Ross. That's something definitely to keep an eye on to when you watch Fox 2 News beginning tomorrow morning. So a lot to, yet to unfold as we are starting to pick up the pieces and learn who's going to be on the city council here in Detroit. Reporting live tonight, Dave Spencer on The Edge. Hi, uh, Dave. Thank you. Now, uh, just to be clear, Andre Spivey is not in prison yet. He's set to be sentenced in January, but uh, he is facing five to six years, possibly because of that federal admission of guilt. Also tonight, Detroiters are deciding the outcome of several proposals. The first is Proposal R. It asked if the Detroit City Council should establish a reparations task force and create programs that address discrimination against Detroit's black community. Voters gave Proposal R a resounding yes with 81 percent of the vote. Proposal E would decriminalize the use and possession of entheogenic plants or magic mushrooms and make it a low priority for police. E is expected to pass. And Proposal S would amend the city charter that restricts voters from enacting city ordinances for the appropriation of money. That one still a toss-up at this hour. 